All right, I'm a fly cam. Uh, in this video, I, I promised that uh, I would put up, and I will, uh, put up, uh, answer your, the subscribers' uh, questions. Uh, but I saw an interview the other day with a gentleman by the name of Frank Mayer. And Frank Mayer said something that reminded me of maybe something I should tell you. Frank Mayer said that hell to him, hell to him would be if when he died he saw the person he could have been. To Frank Mayer, the UFC heavyweight, he said that hell to him was him, or the thought of him, was the thought of him seeing the person he could have been after he died. And that brings me to this. As you know, I started boxing when I was nine. I really didn't realize my potential until I was 13. Now, there's a lot of people that would say, well, you were still young, safe. Yes, that's true. But it was four years. For four years, I was able to beat most people my age. I was able, I had the skills to beat in karate, in boxing, in wrestling. Most other kids that were 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. But I didn't have the courage because I couldn't control this. To this day, I have seen heavyweights. Heavyweights who have talked and ran their mouth and said what they could do and they would do this and they would do that only to get hit one time and look for the exit. Why? Because almost their entire life, for almost their entire life, they have never really been tested because unfortunately people still look at size. There are heavyweights that don't want to fight other heavyweights. As a trainer for an MMA outfit, uh, a former trainer for an MMA outfit that is now uh, non-existent uh, in Newark, I was always told that this particular fighter could fight and that particular co fighter could fight. And since I've been around and I've done so much and I've seen so much in my lifetime, I can look at someone, talk to them for five minutes and know if they have the heart. Not if they're going to win, but if they have the heart to try to win. And there was one time when I was told this guy, this heavyweight, was a good fighter. The first time I met him, and I'm supposed to, the first day of training, he said that he could beat Anderson Silva. This guy had never had an MMA fight in his life. He said he could beat Anderson Silva, and the promoter believed it. And this happened to be a promoter who happened to be a former teacher of mine. He was extremely hard on his students, and some people know who this promoter is. But he was extremely hard on his students. But for some reason, he was very easy on other people, that he, people he didn't teach. He believed this heavyweight really was a good fighter. After five minutes of talking to this heavyweight, I told the promoter I would not be in his corner because he doesn't have the heart to fight like he should fight. Not that he should win. Not to win, but the heart to try to win. And there is a difference, and that's all really any trainer should ask. What happened? I, didn't, I refused to train this guy anymore. Someone else trained him. The first time he got hit in his MMA debut, he turned around. His leg went up in the air. He spun around like he had seen a Martian. He didn't even come out for the second round. He has not been heard from again after that. No more fighting. I doubt if he even watches Bellator the UFC. That's how embarrassed he was, and that's how embarrassed he should have been. Why? He couldn't control this. We saw Guillermo Rigondeaux. We saw Guillermo Rigondeaux beat Nonito Donaire. Now, there are some people that will say, well, he had 400 amateur fights in Cuba. Yeah, that's true. But he had 11 pro fights, I believe. Now, if you had 400 amateur fights, would you still think that you could beat a pound-for-pound -pound best fighter with only 11 pro fights? Probably not. Why? Because those demons would be playing with your mind. Those demons would be saying to you, yeah, you had 400 amateur fights, but they were amateur fights. You've only had 11 pro fights. You can't beat this guy. Guillermo Rigondeaux pulled off one of the biggest ups upsets, although there wasn't a lot of action, he pulled off one of the biggest upsets in 2013 by, be by beating Nonito Donaire. Why? Because he could control this. There was a time I was a part of a promotion with Ghanaian fighters, with a few Ghanaian fighters that came over from Ghana, and I was helping to work with them. Fact of the matter is, is, I still have a good rapport with Ghanaian fighters and people from Ghana. I know firsthand 
firsthand from his friends that Joshua Clotty has never gotten over the fact that he fought in a defensive posture for the whole Manny Pacquiao fight. Here is a man who didn't make $30 million. He didn't make $50 million, but understand he is in Ghana. And although Ghana, the people of Ghana are beautiful people, and very nice people, I love them dearly. The money that goes far here, the money that goes far there, would not go as far here. He is extremely rich by Ghanaian standards. He doesn't have to work again, as long as he stays in Ghana. But he still has never forgiven himself for fighting in a purely defensive posture. Pure, uh, fighting a purely defensive fight when the opportunity was there for him to show the people what he could do. Maybe not beat Manny Pacquiao, but he knows now, he realizes now that he had a defense that, could have, that kept him from being hurt by Manny. So he should have had the wherewithal. He should have had the pride in himself to at least see what he could do and open up with his offense. He has never gotten over that, and he never will in spite of his millions of dollars. The reason why I'm so passionate is because I want every single one of you to realize that poll after poll after poll has shown, not just religious people, but atheists alike, has shown that the number one reason, the number one thing older people regret when they're coming closer to their death, when they're edging closer to the end of their life, is looking at the things they did not have the discipline to follow through with, but they had the talent to conquer. That is why I put up three times more lecture videos than I put up technique videos in spite of my ability and my knowledge to do more technique videos, and I promise to get to that. But many people can tell you belt techniques. Many people can show you punches. Many people can show you kicks. I do not want you to get to the point where you cannot train and you cannot fight up to the level that you used to be able to do and you did not accomplish what you could have accomplished. That's why I speak to you no matter how many, uh, no matter how big the group of subscribers I have, that's why I speak to each and one of you, every one of you, like I'm speaking to you only sitting in the living room. Please use your abilities and conquer your mind. Uma Fight Camp. Save Carmen. Train hard, train smart. See you next video.